Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am here with Matt today and we're doing a fun little trend I've been seeing going around where my husband answers the questions that girls are too afraid to ask the guys in their life. So I asked y'all on Instagram for your questions and this should probably be obvious, but this is going to contain adult themes. So you probably don't want to watch <laughs> this one with your kids. We will try to keep this as PG as we can in terms of language and like how explicit we get. But like I said, adult themes. What kind of questions are you guys sending? <laughs> Should I be worried about your Instagram DMs? This like... is basically just an excuse for me to interrogate you. Oh, well, <laughs> Not uh, that I wouldn't just ask you anything. I feel like we have a really like communicative relationship yeah, with that. You told me one, I think, of the questions already, but I haven't like pre-screened these or anything. So yeah. these are these are coming Completely. to me live. Are you ready? I'm ready. That's really good at being really honest. So I feel Too like honest sometimes. This will be, be good. We'll get all the <laughs> answers that we're looking for. Okay. I think the most common one uh, that I got was about stretch marks. Do stretch marks bother you, A? And two, if they don't bother you on your wife, would they bother you on like another woman who's not your wife? <laughs> well, I hope I wouldn't be seeing them on a... Well, <laughs> that's assuming you're not married. Like if you were like just getting to know somebody and like... So, okay, I don't even that. notice your stretch marks. Like I honestly, do you even, you still have them? Oh yeah. I would assume. I'm oh, not yeah. like saying that to try to get points or anything. I honestly don't even notice them. Uh, so no, they don't bother me, okay. clearly. I have, because of the internet, seen like what really bad stretch marks can look like. And like maybe that would like to be, cause like I see that on Instagram reels and I'm just like, oh, like someone like, like the really, like really, yeah. Or... Like, but that's on another level, I feel like. But in a alternate timeline, you and I weren't together and I was like dating someone that maybe had had a kid. I, I don't see that being an issue. Like for me, if you get to that point with a woman where like the stretch marks, are they bare? You're not looking at the stretch marks. All right. So. Uh, were you afraid that sex would change after babies? I wasn't afraid. I expected it to just because there a lot goes down or goes on down there. Um, but I wasn't afraid. I wasn't like, oh, it's going to be worse or anything like that. It's still sex. So for the record, it didn't change for us. Well, that was another one of the questions. Let me see if I can like oh, find well, it. There's a freebie. Here's a non-sexual one. Why are men so hesitant or afraid of going to therapy? Couple things. I think one might be like going to the doctor. Like the same thing, reason like men don't like to go to the doctor because you're afraid that you're gonna find something wrong. It's almost like taking your car to the mechanic. You don't wanna find something wrong because then you have to fix it. And so like going to the doctor, you're like, oh, I have this thing on my back, but I don't really wanna go to the doctor, A, because it costs money, and B, because if there's something wrong, then there's gonna be something wrong with me and it's gonna cost even more money. So I think it's like in the same vein. There's a huge financial barrier. Here I go. There's a huge financial barrier to mental health care access in this country. Mm -hmm. That's the healthcare access in general in this yeah, country. Yeah, that's the number one problem. I mm, need to be careful here because I don't think I need therapy. So I think that is actually no, I don't need to be careful with that. I think that's a huge. I don't think I need it. I'm also relatively neurotypical and trauma free for like relatively. You know, like I, there's not something I look back on my life and go, that was a traumatic event. Now, is that because I don't see it as traumatic or because it genuinely wasn't traumatic is another thing entirely, but. Well, PTSD is formed based on your body's reaction to something and not the actual event. So like uh, it's by your own perception of it, not yeah. what actually happened a lot of the time. So I tend to be very lucky in that I don't like look back at any particular event in my life and be like, that was traumatic. Now I have been doing for like the last, it's almost been a year. It's been like eight months because when I started with a new company, I've been doing coaching, mental health coaching. Like they're not allowed to call it therapy because they're not licensed therapists. Um, but I've been seeing someone uh, for anger management because have, suddenly having a toddler around who likes to scream no at me at the top of his lungs was, I found out to be very triggering for me. I would yell and scream back and fly off the handle and stuff and uh, I wanted to correct that. So let me dig one step further into that. You said you feel like you don't need therapy. I, I am, I mean, it's no secret, I'm obsessed with therapy. I think everybody needs therapy. So why does that anger management thing feel like it's outside of therapy, I guess? It was free. So back to the financial So back to the financial It was free and provided through my work. So I did not feel like, and so maybe that's another thing that men don't feel like their mental well-being is worth the financial investment. I'm doing this a lot. I'm not Italian, but I'm just like, this is how I'm talking with my hand. So I have... you view therapy as something you do for trauma, mostly. I guess so, yeah. Interesting. Okay. 
completely <laughs> different realm here. Were you disappointed with your penis size when you went through puberty? Or did you have any expectations around that? No. <laughs> I'm not saying that because I'm extremely blessed in that regard. I'm happily average, I would say. Here's the problem with that, and maybe women don't realize this, but men who watch adult content on other places of the internet only see extremely large sizes. Okay. They then, you know, go through puberty and evaluate themselves based on that comparison. Oftentimes I find that that's where the comparison is drawn. Mm, so okay. men are like, oh, I don't have this, so therefore I must be less manly. And that's, that's such a huge problem, but that's, I mean, I've always kind of been very confident anyway. And yeah. maybe that feeds into it, but no, that's not something I've ever been like, Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why do men watch adult content when they have a partner? Something I learned that was that out of all the five senses, men's vision is like the most powerful relative to the other ones. Mm. And for women, it's flip-flopped. Vision's like the lesser and then all their other senses. Um, so it's part of that. And I think a lot of that is the way we are designed to find women attractive, like biologically to then procreate. procreate. I'm not a scientist, maybe that's completely off base. Accessibility is probably a huge part of it. Um, what do you mean, like it's just everywhere? It's there whenever you want it. Oh, okay. There is no rejection involved. Like if you were to approach your partner and be like, hey, I'm down right now and she's not, you know, like mm -hmm. I've never experienced shame. Like, oh, sh I, I feel bad about myself or my body or, or my desires because you aren't in the mood or, or whatever. And that also really happens. So, thankfully. <laughs> um, men will experience or have a lot of experience with this when they're single. And then that habit carries over because it's just something that they do when they have that need. Ladies, I just want to affirm that if that's something that's not okay with you in your relationship, like you can have that. That conversation and set that boundary like Matt and I talked about this pretty early on I was like that's something I would be uncomfortable with that feels a little bit like infidelity to me and he was like cool won't do it and like I don't know your experience I don't know if that was like easy or not but you you know respected that boundary yeah so I can speak to this because I had that habit it still sneaks up on you you know like hey you could just like you know go take care of this and it's like, well, I'd much rather have the real thing. So, uh, you know, first of all. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah. Cool. There's Thanks a, for being that's, There's a lot there, but there you go. <laughs> bachelor parties. I don't get them when a person who is married goes to one. Sorry. Uh, for my bachelor party, I went to a buddy's house with my brothers and uh, some of my other friends. And we watched anime and got drunk and ate sushi. Yeah. <laughs> And that was my bachelor party. And that's been the experience from what you've told me, at least, of all the bachelor parties you've been to. Yeah. It's been like... We didn't even have a bachelor party for one buddy. It was just him and me hanging out all day. And we almost took a nap. And maybe that's because we're in our 30s or, you know, whatever. I don't see the point in tempting infidelity at a bachelor party, yeah. first of all. There's... It seems... You need to have a different conversation. I mean, it's not your... I mean, your husband probably shouldn't go if that kind of content is going to be there. Because you yeah. just... So it's about the content. Of the party itself not necessarily a married man attending a bachelor party yeah so uh does wearing condoms actually feel different for yes guys? oh absolutely okay i think that's yeah it's there's no way around it and the ones that are like feels like there's nothing there mm -mm, garbage do you actually like being a father do you ever wish you weren't yes and yes like I have those moments where I think it was like yesterday. I think every parent has those moments of like, oh my God. Yeah, you're not alone when you're just like, I don't want to be a parent right now. I literally said that yesterday. I was like, I love being a parent. I do not want to be one right now. Because when you're in the midst of just, like I said, the screaming, the overstimulation, the exhaustion. I think this kind of pairs with another question that you, it was like the first answer that came in on the Instagram you told me the other day. Uh, it's like when you just want to be alone and have it be quiet and like we're having, we're like 15 minutes for filming right I now. I know. It's quiet. I love being a parent. All of those other moments of like Rowan climbed on my back and made me carry him around the house or he's figured out that I can work on my iPad instead of my laptop. So for lunch day, he was like, bring work over here, daddy. And he's patting the table next to him as he's, he's eating like, lunch. Sit here next to my booster seat because I love you. Yeah, and just, so uh, I love him so much. And my iPad's still sitting over there on the table, but I love being a father. But yeah, there are absolutely moments, like we put the kids down to bed, it's 8 p.m., just like, thank goodness. <gasps> oh, and know? then we scroll pictures of them on our phone. And then, we, oh, and then it's 10 p.m., we're like, I miss Rowan. Yep. <laughs> Find your girl flowers. What's the male equivalent or would you also like flowers? Case of beer. Really? Okay. Six, six pack of beer. Okay, that's 
that's good for me to know. But also, I've done theater. People would, I would do theater and people would like bring the women like actors flowers, actresses flowers. And I was like, nobody brought me flowers. Like, I feel left out when yeah. I when I don't get brought flowers. One of so. our one of our friends brought you flowers for your birthday this year, and you were like super touched yeah, by that. Yeah, Evan brought me saying? flowers for my birthday because she remembered that I've said this before. I was like, dude, yeah, I would love to get flowers. Yeah. And she grows, you know, everything. So she brought me a bouquet of flowers. I was just like, oh my god, thank you! And they were so beautiful, and I like flowers. So. All right. But case of beer or fries, like what? snacks, snacks. It's all about the snacks, man. Did you struggle with controlling your anger with a new baby? Cool. Crying fussiness. Yeah, we've talked about this already. Yeah, dude. Yeah, big time. There, there are pictures of Rowan that like scroll by on the digital frame, and I will look. There's this one in particular, and I remember taking a picture, taking that picture, and posting it in the group chat, saying, "Caution, babies are louder than they appear," because he had been screaming the entire night. Earplugs and noise canceling headphones worked wonders for me. Like I would go and I would rock him. He'd be screaming and screaming, and boop. I put my noise canceling headphones on. It's just like, oh. I don't care that he's screaming anymore. And I would I would put on, what was I watching? It was the... Was it like Rick and Morty it was a sh It was a sh the other show that was just created by Rick and Morty. Oh. Solar Opposites or something. And it was hilarious. So I was like laughing my butt off at 1 a.m. Rocking him as he just screamed. He would just scream and scream and scream. How many times did you use the noise canceling headphones with Juniper? Once. Do men feel insecure about their bodies or appearance? Rarely. Well, for me anyway. Again, I... I come from a very higher baseline of confidence. Never had body. I don't know that I've ever had that experience. I've never had body confidence issues. All right. Sometimes like, yeah. I'll hang out with Kai too much and he's just like big and brush I'm just like, all right, whatever. Like at our wedding, he put his tux on and I was just like, rude. Because <laughs> he looked so good. Um, how do you really feel about living in a cottage core granny style home? Dude, our home is beautiful. And oh. I... Have barely well, I shouldn't say I haven't lifted a finger because I had to carry that into the house and I had to carry that into the house. Dude, you make our home beautiful. Let me know how much money you need. Oh. Like is really it. Okay. So So you oh, don't I mind do lift that. some of the more feminine like the ruffles. Dude, why would I care about the pillows on the couch? Like why would why do you care about that? If you have a problem with why why do you put frilly pillow it's a pillow. Sit on it. Yeah, we, <laughs> your masculinity's gotta be really fragile if you're threatened by ruffles on a pillow. But like, maybe dive into that if your partner has- Therapy! Yeah, you know, find out why that actually bothers you. Oh, babe, I'm with the guy who's coming over and seeing my frilly pill- Are all climaxes the same for men? I mean, they're not even the same for me. I think that's what they like, mean. Like, is oh, every like for, time the same? No. There's a lot of factors that go into that. It's very, and this kind of goes all the way back to the beginning, but like visually, they can be different just hmm. based on what I am seeing at the time. The longer the build up, the better the experience. The better the experience. The, the more you put into it, the more you get out, literally, and, and figure it out. Like, oh, this is fun. Okay, here. Why do men not accept responsibility and attack you instead when they're wrong? Keyword being attack. And this, again, goes to what I was talking earlier about anger management. Something I learned while I was doing that was that you, the general you, can use anger to cover up uncomfortable emotions. Anger is a secondary emotion, so it always comes yeah. from something else. Shame, embarrassment, fear, sadness. Anger gives you control, gives you a sense of control because it is coming from within. Like you were like, it makes you feel powerful. Something that I really wanted to focus on when I found out, you know, we were having a boy was making him very emotionally aware, um, intelligent. Yeah. Emotionally intelligent, I guess. Um, because one of the things that I read was a study on uh, male emotions and how a lot of men have been conditioned to feel like anger is the only acceptable emotion for them to outwardly display. So I don't know if that plays a part into it too, but that's something I've been working on with Rowan to like not feel that way and to know that all his emotions are okay. So I wanted to mention that. It's really, really easy to just get mad and it's really hard to just be like, you're right, that was wrong, I'm sorry. Like that's, if, if more men, if more people did that, you know, the world would be a better place. Do men think about other girls? And if so, do they ever think about cheating? Like actually like consider it. I don't. Cool. <laughs> uh, I'm very happy in our marriage and our house and with our kids and, and like the situation and everything. I have a feeling like this kind of goes back to that, like looking to other places for that satisfaction. Again, never 
been an issue for me, but it's also, you know, not an acceptable solution. You know, if you're having problems in the bedroom at home, like you need to have that conversation at home. You don't seek a resolution for that somewhere else. It can go both ways. Like for either partner, if there's a member of the opposite sex that your partner is, I, I know it's so that. it's so hard because we're so disclaimer. I probably should have said this in the beginning, but we're talking we're using heteronormative language because we're talking about our own experience. Um, yeah. But you can substitute <laughs> in like partner or spouse or if he says wife and you have a husband, you know. Yeah, I'm trying really hard to to be inclusive in my answers, so that's. Why? So for our specific case, like if you were really, really good friends with a guy that like predated our relationship, mm -hmm. I don't think I would have a problem with that. And again, that goes back to just my higher baseline of confidence. But you know, if I was like really good friends with a girl predating our relationship, like I would be careful with that. I mean, it obviously depends on the individual relationship, but like I can definitely see me getting insecure and uncomfortable with something like that if it went a certain way. And in that situation, if she was also married, that would kind of be a given of like, okay, well, like they're not gonna, you know, go behind their both their spouses' backs or anything. But that does happen. But I mean, like, yeah, in my opinion, as a man, you shouldn't be like the sole source of emotional comfort for another woman that's not your partner. Yeah. I think that's a I think that's a very reasonable rule. And as a male, if you're getting defensive because your partner is uncomfortable with your friendship or relationship with someone else, then you need to examine that decide where your priorities are. So on like a, a more surface level, what about like checking out other girls in public? I mean, again, circling all the way back to like visually stimulated, like a girl is gonna walk by in like a deep cut shirt and like you're just gonna be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like it's- you, you can't turn off your eyes. I frequently check out girls in public, not from like a sexual- You see more than I do. Point of view, but I'm like, oh my gosh, like she looks so good in those jeans. Those are the perfect jeans for her. Like, wow, her butt looks great. And I'm not like, how do, how do I, you know, hit on her or whatever. But like, yeah, beauty is beauty and you can notice it without it being- Yeah, distracting. Yeah. Like, if you notice, that's fine, that's one thing, but don't just be, like, ogling a girl walking through the parking lot while you're there with your family, like, going to Target or whatever. Just be, like, looking around backwards as you're, like, pushing the stroll or something. Like, don't do that. <laughs> it's it's gonna happen on accident. Don't do it on purpose. Oh, man. Mm. How, are you, how are you feeling about that and all those questions? Pretty standard stuff. Yeah? I think, yeah. I'm, like, scared to post this. I feel like... I, with the internet, people are always going to twist your words the wrong way. Hopefully the people who are there following, like, know us and, you know, know our hearts enough to know that, like... Look, I answer honestly, and my answers are going to be true for, like, 90% of other men. You think so? I feel like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say some controversial stuff that other men may not agree with, but it's still probably true. You just haven't realized it. You have anger management issues. Well, thank you yeah. for your honesty and vulnerability. Thank you guys for being here. I'll answer more. Like I know we've been talking for like half an hour, 40 minutes now. Oh my like, gosh, this is uh, going to be a long it, video. It goes quick, but like I will answer these questions anytime. So like if you have other questions, just DM Megan on her Instagram and or comment below and I'll jump in the comments and answer more stuff that we can't put on film. Yeah. But like I love it. I love talking about this kind of stuff, so. I don't know what I would do if you were like not as open book as <sighs> Camera <anything>. loves me. <laughs> And with that, we will end the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. We love you all lots, and we will see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.